Calls to investigate the origins of the special counsel's probe are getting louder. Fueled by the fact that the Mueller report found several allegations included in the Steele dossier were either completely false or impossible to verify. The New York Times writes this. Now the dossier, financed by Hillary Clinton's campaign and the Democratic National Committee, and compiled by the former British intelligence agent Christopher Steele, is likely to face new, possibly harsh scrutiny from multiple inquiries. All right, let's turn to former Deputy Assistant Attorneys General Harry Lippman and John Yu. Welcome to both of you. Thanks, Shannon. Okay, so a lot of questions. And uh, this weekend, John, the New York Times writing essentially like, listen, a lot of this stuff just didn't pan out. Either not true, can't prove it, and now they're sounding like critics of the dossier two years in. I think that's accurate. If you read the first volume of the Mueller report and you look for any kind of confirmation of the Steele dossier, it's not in there. In fact, it seems to be that Mueller concluded pretty early on that most of it was false or misleading or just simply not worth looking at, not following up on. So the question really is, in my mind, how were our intelligence agencies duped? Were they naive and gullible? Is it something they so badly wanted to believe that Trump was really working for the Russians that they just passed it along to the FISA court to get warrants without really second uh, guessing or checking it? Or is there something more nefarious going on? Mm -hmm. Were there people in the administration at that time and the intelligence agencies who really wanted to stop Trump, who were worried about him, and so they bought the whole thing hook, line, and sinker because they wanted to use it for a bad purpose, which was spying on an ongoing presidential campaign by a major party. Well, and a lot of folks are asking questions this weekend, too, on the Sunday shows and talking about whether this was Russia's most brilliant move, spreading disinformation. Um, our own Chris Wallace asked the ranking or the chairman now of the House Intelligence Committee, Adam Schiff, repeatedly about whether he would be willing to dig back and investigate the dossier itself as to whether it was Russian misinformation. Here's his response. The Mueller report makes it absolutely crystal clear that the initiation of this investigation was not only warranted, but absolutely necessary because it revealed a widespread systemic effort by the Russians to help the Trump campaign. But Harry, should Democrats be willing to see if part of that included spreading disinformation through the dossier? Yeah, maybe. I mean, it, look, I kind of agree with, with John. There were some snippets there that he verified, others that he said were wrong, but we just need to distinguish two things. The quality of the information we get, how we know it's the best, that's one thing. But then second, the most salient point right now is anything about the um, actual probe, anything that Mueller did somehow infected by misinformation such that it led to wrong conclusions. I don't think there's any evidence to that. So as to John's S-word of the spying point or that they were duped on purpose. You know, I, I, don't, I just don't think there's any reason to think it now, but it's fine to look at and figure out how it is that, uh, that we, you know, received some intelligence, not all of which was borne out. All right, I want to get you both to comment as well on, we have new subpoenas that have gone out. Uh, the, the newest one today to former White House counsel Don McGahn. Um, and, uh, you know, the back and forth between the partisanship, the, the Republicans and Democrats uh, over this. Uh, Congressman Collins uh, says this in the, to the, his letter to the chairman, Jerry Nadler, of the committee. He says, I encourage you to take the attorney general up on his offer to read the full report. Dismissing this offer and refusing to review the report you demanded as soon as possible amounts to a dereliction of duty. The president is fighting another subpoena in court, says um, he is going to keep his financial records from being turned over. Give you both a bite at this back and forth, John, to you first. Well, first, I think this is, puts uh, the White House in a tough legal spot, but not a tough political spot. Legally, they could claim executive privilege. The idea that the president's uh, communications with his top aide should be protected by the Constitution so that he can effectively, the president can effectively pursue his responsibilities, has been recognized by courts since the Watergate tapes case and by practice for many, many decades before that. But lead, politically, I think the smart thing would be for Trump to waive executive privilege, let Don McGahn appear in Congress and tell his story. We already have his story. Mueller already put it in the report. There's almost no redactions around McGahn's story. Why not? Why, Trump, I think, politically would be smart to let all the information out because Mueller already has. Why try to keep anything yeah. privileged and protected it, at this and on, point? And on that one, that may be what the White House does. But Harry, you know, on the other, um, the other subpoena that comes from Congressman Cummings, the chairman, um, he's asking for totally different things. I mean, financial records for long before the president was ever the president. 
Yeah, that's right. And uh, so the, the lawsuit that Trump has filed today, and John as a federal court scholar would, would know how anomalous it was that he sued Cummings personally, says there's no legitimate oversight. It's a little ironic. He's claimed in the past, you can't second guess me. I'm in with my broad area of authority. And I think that's right for Congress. Too. It's going to be hard for him to assert, and I don't think he's going to win, that Congress has no possible legitimate oversight purpose in looking for the, those records, and that's probably the way it winds up. I think yeah. it winds up on the short end there. Well, in the lawsuit, they say it's all about exposing the, um, the president so that they can use it as a political tool against him in 2020. We'll see if the judge buys that. Uh, Harry and John, thank you both very much. Great to have you.